Well, firstly, thank you all for inviting me to address this Health Watch National Conference. And I'm sorry I can't be there in person, but I hope you're finding it both an interesting and an informative and useful event. Now, before I start, I want to put on record my thanks to everyone here for their hard work, especially over the last two years. The pandemic has touched every aspect of the NHS, and I think it's right that we take a moment to reflect on the hard work and dedication of people working in local health watches up and down the country. Without your efforts, the link, that vital link between patients, the public, and the services they rely on would have been weakened. And the voices we would need to hear the most, and we always do need to hear the most, those of the service users of the patients, would have been quietened. The work you do is, and will continue to be, immensely valuable, and I thank you all for all that you do. Now the pandemic has shown us many of the areas where the health and care system has needed to change, to adapt, not because it has failed in the past, but because under the pressure of extraordinary circumstances, the system has found itself transforming and changing many of the things that had held it back. Breaking down barriers to integration, coming together to share resources, thinking as organisations, not as an entity entire and complete of themselves, but as a collective endeavour rather than in silos, as part of something much bigger. Now, as everyone knows, we're in the process of legislative changes to underpin reform of the NHS and the Health and Care Bill has just passed through its committee stage in the House of Commons. With that bill, we are seeking to build on what we have learnt in the pandemic and from years of valuable work done by organisations such as yours to give the health and social care system the tools it needs to build back better. More integrated, more accountable and wherever possible, less bureaucratic. We are bringing people together in integrated care systems to develop and deliver better services and more integration for the people who every day rely on our health and care system. And in that process, Healthwatch has a crucial role to play as the voice of patients and the public, but also crucially as an advocate on their behalf. We've been explicit about this in both the bill and the various pieces of supporting guidance. <clears throat> and I would urge you to continue to engage with both your integrated care board and your integrated care partnership as they develop themselves into crucial players in our health and care system. Through all of this, you will continue to be that direct link, that golden thread between the NHS, local authorities and the public, the people they serve, ensuring that the public's needs are reflected in the services provided for them, but also helping inform the public about their local services and how they're being delivered and how they're being improved. It is absolutely vital, possibly more so than ever, that the public are heard as we design more integrated, people-centred services. Without that patient, without that public voice, we will end up designing services that may work for the system, but will not work as well as they could for the people who rely on them day in, day out. Healthwatch is, and must remain, their megaphone, amplifying the voice of the patient and ensuring it is heard by commissioners and providers and by ministers such as myself. And that will be increasingly crucial as we move into the next stage, building back after the pandemic. Now, I'm very grateful for the work that Healthwatch carried out to support NHS England's clinically-led review of access standards for routine elective care prior to the pandemic. I understand that Healthwatch England have also recently raised the issue of delays to treatment and we are of course keen to work closely with Healthwatch and with NHS England to address these crucial issues. I also want to applaud the work that you've been doing with NHS England to help improve access to GP appointments. While this is always challenging territory, we were very grateful for the recent blueprint you submitted with your ideas for improving access. Now, as you'll all be aware, we have now published a plan to support GPs, aiming to make it easier for patients to see or speak to GPs and their teams. The measures in the plan will help GPs who've worked incredibly hard throughout this pandemic to increase face-to-face -face appointments and enhance the role of community pharmacists in parallel and other clinicians so that patients everywhere can benefit from the high quality care that our GP practices offer. 
The plan is backed by a new £250 million winter access fund, which will help patients with urgent care needs to get seen when they need to, on the same day, taking account of their preferences of how they wish to see their practitioner. And as we look forward, we can clearly see that Healthwatch will have a vital role to play for years to come. It will continue to be a key player in our health and care system, bringing together the NHS, local authorities and the public, both as an advocate, as a guide, and as a supportive friend and advisor to us and to the system. I thank you for all the work you have done in the past, wish you all the very best for the future, and look forward to continuing to work closely with you. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your conference.